Yo, what's up? You talking back on the video? This is the continuation of what I left off on my last video. We went into a little bit on the Book of Enoch. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to try to piece some more of this stuff to color for you, right? Now, once again, we're gonna come from this book, the Make of the White Man, and then right here. Gonna be reading from they call this a fragment of the book of Noah, a part of the book of Enoch, right? Now, so who was Enoch interacting with? Okay, now what we need to do is we need to go back into this book right here. Black History Magazine, Black Ancient Space Traveler. There's no out of space, but they're flying around in the, in the, in the sky. It's a black dude flying around in the sky. Okay? Now, so, what we want to do is, um, let's see here. I want to show you. Okay, so we see here that in this book here, it's, it's telling you that these ancient Egyptians, these black people, have on their walls carved in Egypt. Uh, they have built craft for them to fly around in the sky. Okay? And this is in uh, prehistoric uh, ships, artifacts found in Mexico, right? Okay? Central America, South America, you got them. Uh, Atlanteans is a black people, okay. Uh, suits found ancient bl black men found uh, in uh, courtesy of Mexican Museum, okay. Um, so let's go right here again, okay. And it says that in the book, um, um, where's it say? James Bramwell's book, Lost Atlantis, he says that, quote, they also had airships. They harnessed the power of gravitation to propel their airships. So these black people, before the white man came on the scene, built ships, airships, like airplanes. But these ships that they built, uh, they uh, mastered the laws of gravity, so-called gravity. Okay? And uh, the ships that they built, uh, their speed is is, uh, is is it goes at phenomenal speeds. Okay. Now, what I want to do is we're gonna put this to the side, right? Okay. And we're gonna go back to this map once once again. Okay. Atlantis, okay, and things like that, or Lemuria, or Mu, or uh, in that watch, they call it uh, the continent of a pan. The continent of a pan, you know what I'm saying? Go back to this map right here. All the land masses connected, okay? Africa, South America, North America, Antarctica down here, India, Australia, and Europe or Eurasia, okay? All this stuff's connected, right? Now. Let's go back. Let's go right here so you can paint a picture in your head that uh, we're going to go back into uh, um, it says here that black albinos and their African parents with black and blue eyes. So you got black albinos. So keep this picture. Keep this. Keep this dude in mind, right? Keep these people in mind. These, these albinos. White people are nothing but albinos. Okay? Because black people produce albinos. And from albinos come white people. Caucasians. Okay? Now keep this dude in mind. We're going to use him for an example. Because he's going to play a particular role in the story we're going to read. Okay? Now, let's put this to the side. Right? 
and we're gonna go back into this book once more to make it on the white man, okay? And right here, when we go here to the book, let me, matter of fact, let me let me cue my music up. I want you to I want to get you all to think. So you can see what's going on here. Okay. So when you go here to the book of Enoch, right? It's the book of Enoch, right? And Enoch, in the book of Enoch, okay, he's standing, he's speaking with, with the Most High, the Elohim. Who are the Elohim? The Elohim are black people. Okay? The Elohim are black men and women. Okay? And we're going to prove this. Prove this before. And it's going to play a part into... Uh, is there an edge of the earth? Is there is there a, is there a gateway to what we're living on? And and is the gateway to what we're living on? Because the earth is the ground we're living on. So at the so-called boundary or the edge of the earth, or is there is there is there something? Is there a barrier, or is there like a gateway that's been that's, that has been closed off from us from the public that we cannot see? That goes into another realm. Now, let's go here. So before we do, we have to go back. Now remember, this is only going back six thousand years ago, okay? With Adam and Eve. So let's read this one more time, okay? Because this is going to play a part in the Book of Enoch, and and with uh and also with this map. Uh, where is it at? With this, with this map here. This map here, okay. Because we've been trained to, to, to be to think that everything is taking place in Africa, just on this one continent. But remember, like I said, it's civilizations on all continents, and they're all experiencing the same thing. So everything is connected, okay, at this particular time and juncture. Right? They tell you. They say that the Bible says the earth had one language and one land. It was the earth was the earth was one land mass. So the earth is the ground we're walking on. So this is it's the ground. Okay? Now, let's go here to real history symbolically told. So Adam and Eve are just names just, just made up. You know what I'm saying? These are made up names. To give to a group of people. Now. Matter of fact, before I do that, we want to go here to, uh, let's see here. Before we go to the story, we need to go back here to the Elohim. Okay? Now, it says, many other Hebrew scholars have insisted that the name Adam it's a, it's a plural noun. Uh, they mean by this that it represents a group and not a single, singular individual. Moreover, that Adam is intended to represent a group of men and women is made clear by the way in which the name is used throughout the Old Testament. Among several examples are those that appear in Genesis 1.27 and Genesis 5.2, both of which state, quote, men and women, men and female, created he them and called their name Adam. Okay? Uh, here the Bible says that Adam is a group of men and women. If Adam were a single individual, then the Bible would not refer to him as them. Certainly a group of certainly a group is being spoken of, but which group of men and women is Adam presumed to represent? Also, who made Adam and what does the name Adam really mean? Okay? Now give me one second. Okay. Trying to break it down for you. Okay. It says here, the Bible says that Adam is a group of men and women. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Adam made by a group of people. The 
book of Genesis first speaks of the making of Adam in the 26th verse of the first chapter. There the words of the Old Testament describes Adam as a group of people who are about to be made by another group of people. So it says, and God said. So we know that God is Elohim. In this case, the Bible not only calls Adam them, but it also refers to the makers of Adam as us. This shows that Adam and the makers of Adam were in fact two separate groups of people. The English word God, as it appears in this verse, is a translation from the Hebrew word Elohim. Like Adam, Elohim is also a plural noun. It indicates a group of beings, and it too is both masculine and feminine. So, if we look at the pictures here, if we look at the pictures here, okay, these black people will be your Elohim, and the white people will be Adam and Eve. Okay? Now, let's keep on going. It says here that G. D. Peruka, chairman of the Theosophical Society, lectured on the significance of the word Elohim in a book called Fundamentals of the Esoteric Philosophy. Concerning the actual meaning of the word and how it refers to uh, polarity of beings, uh, Peruka pointed out, quote, the first part of it is El, meaning God, divinity, from which comes the second, a feminine form, uh, Elohim. It's merely the masculine plural. So if we translate every element in this single word, it would mean God, goddesses, plural. That the gods and goddesses whom the Bible credits with having made Adam were only a group of men and women can be plainly demonstrated by examining the way in which Elohim is used in other places throughout the Bible. A survey of the facts reveals that Elohim is not actually a name but is instead only a title, one that in ancient times had been given to people who had distinguished themselves through some sort, through some act or service. You see that? This much is even acknowledged in the International Bible Encyclopedia, which defines Elohim as a title, designating a position of honor and authority among men. Now, it goes on to say here that um, Biblical scholar T. Reed says that Elohim is just, quote, a general term expressing majesty and authority. Lastly, R. A. Thalason, professor of Semitic theology, wrote an article in which he plainly showed that the word Elohim derives from a root indicating strength or might. And with this connotation, he wrote, quote, it is applied in the Old Testament to men. Based on all these facts, it is evident that the group that the Elohim were only a group of people. So the Elohim, are, the Elohim, are black people, men and women. Now, we need to go here. Um, go back here. Okay. Pause that. I mean, I mean, let me, uh, give me one second. So this is what, the, this is what they're not going to show you. So I got to do it for you to break it down. Okay. One second. Okay, so we're going to go here. Now, like I said, keep this dude in mind, right? He's an albino, okay? Now, remember, black people have been here for 70 trillion years. Now, if you've you been watching my videos, you already know that, that God, or the Elohim of black people, we have an origin. And our origin is not of the earth. Okay, the earth is just the ground. Okay? And so-called space is just a damn sky. It's endless. It's infinite. 
There's no limit. It's limitless. Okay? Now, we're going to go here again. And it says here, let's keep this map in mind, right? Okay? Um... Okay, so like, like, check this out. Okay. So it says right here in this book, John Fanat in his book, Race Prejudice, page 99, says, quote, let us remember, according to uh, Giuseppe Sergi and Professor Breton, says, quote, the white race, the ethnopithical pride of Europe is only a direct fruit of the Negro race. It says, quote, the eastern part of Brazil and the western part of Africa were once joined together as one plot of land but rent but rent during the geographical rearrangement caused by the flood in the days of Noah. The separation of South America and South Africa took place between 30,000 and 40,000 years ago. Now, I thought that the I thought that the flood took place 6,000 years ago. So time, somebody's timeline is the timeline is off. Something, something that's not accurate. The time is off. But still, let's keep on going. So, real history symbolically told. Okay. Now just listen to this because we're gonna use this and we're gonna cross reference this book with what they have here on Wikipedia for. Uh, not Wikipedia, but on Sacred Text for the Book of Enoch, and we click on um, we click on here. We're gonna click on here on the um, the fragment of the Book of Enoch of the Book of Noah. Okay, now keep that. Keep this in mind. We're gonna come back to that. And it says to that, real history symbolically told. Many of the traditions, many of the, of the traditions of the ancient Near East tell of events and circumstances identical in every way. Those taught by Elijah Muhammad. Uh, viewing is as viewed individually, it is easy to attribute such similarities to coincidence. But when collectively examined, the ancient account presents a pattern. So overwhelming consistent with the teaching of Muhammad that they leave no doubt as to the certainty of their meaning of their meaning. Certainty of their meaning. A number of accounts are included in this category. Each tale of the birth of a white skinned child whose arrival signals the beginning of trouble and chaos, and who ends up being driven away from the people and taken to a remote location high in the Caucasus Mountains. Okay, so we need our map. We need to see what's going on here. Okay? We need our map. It's dealing with geography. Okay, we're dealing with we're dealing with geography. Alright? Dealing with geography. Okay? So it says that um, each tell of the birth of white skin of a white skinned child of white skinned children whose arrival signals the beginning of trouble and chaos who's being driven away to remote locations in the high in the Caucasus Mountains. So the Caucasus Mountains is up here in you in Europe. Okay? And it says here that Historically, such accounts narrate the birth and arrival of a new race of people, the disruptions which follow, and the driving away of that new race into the, into the hills of West Asia. Okay? 
Uh, such are the details that appear in the history of ancient Persia. The history of the ancient Persian is outlined in its national epic called the Shanama. This ancient account relates an event in which two dark-skinned parents give birth to a white-skinned son. The boy's father was terrified by the unusual color of the child, and he immediately announced to the people that this newly arrived son belonged to a race of devils. Okay. Soon thereafter, a group of men from among the elders of the city issued a warning concerning the white child's future. Turning toward the father of the boy, the elders declared, quote, this will be to thee productive with nothing but calamity. As in the story of Adam and Eve, a descendant was made to remove the child Adam from the region. Now remember, Adam and Eve are men and women. Now remember, before Adam and Eve, so Adam and Eve don't just come out full, full blown adults. No. They are offspring of black people. So, so black people are able to produce white people. Black albinos. Okay? And these black people are producing these babies. Okay? I'm just painting a picture for you. Because it says that if black people were on all these continents before white people became into existence, that means that they're all doing the same thing. Producing these albinos. They're producing babies. And they have to learn from somebody how to eat, how to walk, talk. You know what I'm saying? You're just not born just knowing stuff. No, somebody got to teach you this stuff. Okay? Think. All right? So let's keep on going. And it says that in the words of the Shanama, the white-skinned boy was stripped bare and removed from the land and abandoned in some remote place far from association with men. Thus the child was seized and taken to Mount Alberus in the heart of the Caucasus Mountains. There the boy was abandoned, isolated and alone he grew up naked without shelter. Another tradition recorded in the Book of Enoch also fits this familiar pattern states that Lamech's wife gave birth to an Lamech's wife gave birth to a white-skinned son. Lamech's white-skinned white skin son likewise ends up in the Caucasus Mountains on Mount Ararat. According to the version found in the book of Enoch, Lamech, the boy's father, described the child as changed, unlike and of a different nature than those who had lived before him. So, when we go here, it says that after some days, my son Methuselah took a wife for his son Lamech, and she became pregnant by him and bore his son. Okay? Now it says here that, as in the other accounts, the newly arrived child's skin is said to have been white as snow, and his hair was blonde. Now, we gotta go back into the pictures. Right here. So this dude, this will be your Noah. This will be your Noah. Okay? This is a fragment of the book of Noah. And it said to that, the book of Enoch talked about what happened when Lamech learned that his wife had given birth to the uncommonly colored child. In this regard, chapter 105 states, she became pregnant by him. Okay? And brought forth a child, the flesh of which was white as snow and red as a rose, and the hair of his head was white and long. Now, listen to this. Same thing. She uh, she became pregnant by a boy's son, and his body was white as snow. His body was white as snow, right? And red as the blooming of a rose. And the hair of his head and his long locks were white as wool, uh, were white as wool. And his eyes beautiful. And when he opened his eyes, he lighted up the whole house like the sun. And the whole house was very bright. And thereupon he arose in the hands of the midwife, opened his mouth, and conversed with the Lord of righteousness. And his, fa and his father Lamech was afraid of him and fled and came to his father Methuselah. And he said to him, I have begotten a strange son, diverse from and unlike men. And resembling the sons 
of the God of heaven, and his nature is different, and he is not like us. And his eyes are as the rays of the sun that counts as glorious. Uh, okay, now, they do a little word play here. Because in here, it says that, so Enoch is an albino, and he has locks. He's still black. He still has pigment, like this woman right here. See how she's losing her melanin and she becoming an albino. But no, but Noah came out an albino. Okay. But he still had locks. He still had woolly hair. Okay. And it says here that um, the mix followed the fray of okay, law. Okay. It says here the circumstances surrounding the birth of the white skinned child symbolically represents the arrival of a new white skinned race of people into the region of the Near East. The Max father, Medusa, not knowing what to make of the unusual looking boy, went seeking the advice of his own father, Enoch. Um, thus, Medusa went to Enoch and said, A child has been born whose nature is not like the nature of man. His color is whiter than snow. His color is whiter than the snow. He is redder than the rose. His, the hair of his head is whiter than white. And behold, I am come to thee that thou Midas point out to me the truth. Okay? But Thuzla's last statement suggests that there to be a hidden meaning or symbolic purpose associated with the birth of the child, that the child's birth is only an allegory signaling, signaling the beginning of some important historical event. Okay? Um, Enoch's response Methuselah's shocking announcement confirms that a change was in fact about to occur. Following Methuselah's announcement, Enoch responds, quote, Then I, Enoch, answered and said, The Lord will effect a new thing upon earth. So I've read about this before. So, this dude right here, this dude right here would be your Noah. He would be your Noah. Okay? In the Bible. And Noah is producing offspring. And what did they say to Noah's boat ended up? In Mount Ararat. Where's Mount Ararat? In the Caucasus Mountains. Okay? In the Caucasus Mountains. Alright. So let's just say for argument's sake. For argument's sake. That this stuff took place down here, right? In uh, in Antarctica, right? And they say that Antarctica used to be back in the day, it used to get up like 75 degrees, something like that, whatever, right? Depending upon what source you go to, right? Okay. And it says that Noah boat landed up in Mount Ararat in the Caucasus Mountain. That's in that's in Europe. Okay? So this boat ended all the way up here. Right, this is this is what the story says, right? Okay. And then from him, everybody else got produced. His his uh Noah produced sons, Shem Ham and Japheth. And a, and after those eight people, everybody else got populated. Bullshit. We was already here. We was already here. Black people already here. This is the making of somebody that's new, a new race. Because because there's only one bloodline. Right? Okay. Now, um, let's see here. Right, there's on there's only one there's only one bloodline. Okay. Now what I want to do is. I want to show you here. Okay, so like I said, Noah, this is your Noah with locks, albinos, and albinos are producing white people. So the gods, the God in your Bible, Quran, Holy Quran, uh, be the scripture, whatever, these are people, these are black men and women, right? 
And when we go by the map, once again, blacks were in America when Africa and America was one land and divided 40,000 B.C. The black Grimaldi Africans occupied all parts of Europe in 15,000 B.C. The first white man was made 4,000 B.C. from black albinos. Okay? India means black, and India was first originated by black Ethiopians. Okay? North and South America was ruled by Olmec Egyptians, 15,000 B.C. to 400 B.C. Greece, ancient Greece, was started by black Minoan Egyptians, 2000 B.C. to, 2000 BC to 800 B.C. Um, ancient Rome, black people, China, black people, this is all around the world. Okay? You have pyramids built all around the world. So we know that white folks, Caucasians, Europeans, are not building anything at this particular time of junction. Uh, 78 trillion years going all the way down to 6,000, 4,000 uh, years. 4,000, 6,000 years, that's when white people come on the scene. And even with the time, let me see if I can find this clip. Uh, Anthony Browder had did a, uh, he had did a uh, interview, and he was talking about time. And white people didn't know anything. They didn't know anything about time. Less than six thousand, four thousand years ago. So who came up with who came up with time? Black people. Um. I have his book too. Let's see. Something that you said today in the presentation um, about your um, peer Van Serti. Taught at Rutgers. And uh, he was always, uh, if you want to make sure that you can get your word out, then you can, he was constrained by not working for white folk or crazy niggas in those fields. I'm not a trained historian. I'm not a trained public speaker. And I came to realize during that two and a half years that as long as I and Russell up, clocked my nine to five, and that's when I decided to, to leave. So I left it. And, and, so I'm glad you asked that question, made that statement. You didn't ask the question, you made the statement. So there is this thing in the States, I don't know if they have it here, uh, CP time, right? Color people. Don't. So if we created time, and if we also understand that the Caucasians, that's real. So if we created books, we know that the oldest calendar ever created was created by Africans as late as 4,230 B.C., before Caucasians. It was created by Africans as late as 4,230 B.C. The oldest calendar ever created was created by Africans as late as 4,230 B.C., before Caucasians. That's real. So if we created time, and if we also understand that everything in the universe happens on time, the sun rises and sets on time, C, before Caucasians ever created was created by Africans as 165 and a quarter days. We know that the oldest calendar ever created was created by Africans as late as 4,230 B.C. 4,230 B.C. 4,230 B.C. So, now we gotta do a little math here. So, white folks, are, they still off. They still behind. So, black people created time. What is time? 
how do we even know that the year we in right now? Because they tell us that we live in the year 2019, and next year is going to be the year 2020. How do we, how do we even know that, that, that that's accurate, that's, that that's right? Because the white man has changed the times and laws and dates and all that shit. You know, this man just said that, let's listen to it again. And we're going to listen, and we're going to see this, right? It says that the first white man was made 4,000 B.C. from black albinos. Okay? So 4,000 years ago, the white man took, a, took control of time, changed the time around. Before then, they was on time. They had time. So I told you, I told you, I bring raw facts to my channel. Raw facts. So what? What is time? How did you? How do you? How do you define time? I can make up my own goddamn time and say we're not living. It's not the year 2019. I can. I can say this is the year. Uh. 7,029. Listen to me. Listen to him again. And, and then look at the look at the goddamn time that the white man has. Before Caucasian created was created by Africans as late as four thousand. First people to divide the day into twenty-four hours. The first people to divide the year into three hundred and sixty-five and a quarter days. We know that the oldest calendar ever created was created by Africans as late as four thousand two hundred and thirty deep. Four thousand two hundred and thirty. 4,000, let's do the math. So, 4,230. Let's do the math. 4,230 B.C. Take away 4,000. That's when the white man came on the scene. So, the white man is still behind 230 years. He's still behind Okay? If I'm off on my, my map, comment down below. So the time is all fucked up. Let's do it again. See, you know, 24 hours, the first people to divide the year into 365 and a quarter days. We know that the oldest calendar ever created was created by Africans as late as 4,230 B.C., before Caucasians. That's why Africans as late as 4,230 B.C., before Caucasians created, was created by Africans as late as 4,230 B.C. 4,200. So you got 4,230 B.C., Let's do it again. Four thousand two hundred thirty. Take away four thousand. Uh -oh. Four thousand two hundred thirty. Take away four thousand. Two hundred thirty. Four thousand. 230, take away 4,230. Black folks already had it. They already had a calendar. They already, they already had time, time mapped out. BC, but in 24 hours, the first people to divide the year into 365 and a quarter days. We know that the oldest calendar ever created was created by Africans as late as 4,230 BC, before Caucasians. Before Caucasians. They already had time. You already had time. First white man, the first white man was made 4,000 BC from black albinos. This man is saying that black folks had time already mapped out. Based on doing the math, 230 years uh, 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 in advance, uh, when you take into account with the with the math that we just did, with the math we, that we just did here, uh, they already had a 230 year jump start on time before the white man came on the scene 4,000 years ago. When you when you do the when you do the time, I wasn't that good at math. You know what I'm saying? 
So you got 4,230. Take away 4,000. All right? This is what you this is what you come up with. And listen to what he's saying. That's what your people, the first people to divide the day into 24 hours, the first people to divide the year into 365 and a quarter days. We know that the oldest calendar ever created was created by Africans as late as 4,230 B.C., before Caucasians. That's real. So if we created time, and if we also understand that everything in the universe happens on time, the sun rises and the sun... So, what are they, what, what else are they... Are they hiding? And but what I mean, and who I mean by they are white people, our 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 offspring. What are they hiding? Okay. Now how are you going to debunk this? Just broke down your book of Enoch that quick. They ain't have to read all them goddamn books, all them damn chapters. I just used this one, this one book to cross-reference all those books on the book of Enoch. That book they hid, they, 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 they took out the Bible. Showing and, showing and proving to and telling you that there ain't no goddamn out of space. We just traveling in the damn sky. And depending on the type of metal you use to travel in the sky, there's different atmospheric pressures in the sky. The further you go up, I don't know. I never been. I've been on. A, I have. I've traveled on an airplane before. But I'm quite sure the, the further you try, the, the furthest you you go up in uh, in the sky, the uh, you're gonna feel the pressure. I'm quite sure if you take road trips and you go down a hill, you can feel the pressure. You can see, you feel that popping sound in your ears. That's the pressure. When you go down in this, when you go deep sea diving, you got to put on equipment. Because that's pressure. The deeper you go, the deep, the deeper you, the deeper you go in the water, that's pressure. You a bust. You'll bust open. So you have to have some type of equipment that's adaptable to those pressure, to those uh, uh, atmospheric uh, pressures. Whether you go in the water, the deeper you go in the water, or when you go in the, uh, the, fur the further you go up in the sky. So, just like with the movie Abyss, the Abyss. That dude had to put on a suit. He had to put on, on, on a deep sea diving suit to be able to withstand those pressures in the water. The movie Abyss, and you can see here, right here, you see he got the, the, the suit on, right? He got He got that suit on. So, um, so if we are underwater, okay, is is there a barrier? Is there something that's that's has been closed off from the from the rest of the population of the world that we are not able to gain access to? Because as far as I'm concerned, they got us trapped. We are enclosed. Like some goddamn guinea, gu guinea lab rats. Some guinea pig, like some rats. Like some hamsters on a, on a cog on a wheel. Okay? I mean, is it is it more to this? Like, 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 when we look at this map here, right? This is all. This is all we're told. This is all we know. Okay. Um, where is it? At?
Like here, this map, this is all we know. Europe, North America, South America, Africa, Antarctica, Australia, and this is all we know. But what's what's outside of this? Is, it, is there anything else outside of this? Any more land masses that we don't know about? Is it, Are there more black people that's living outside of this? Besides the these continents, the, these only seven continents that, that we know about? Ask yourself that question. Okay? Because Enoch said he was taken up. And we know that that, that who took him up? People that look like him. That was building ships. To travel in the sky 50,000 years ago, 25,000 years ago. So Enoch is saying people that look like him, that's way older than him. Because Enoch is only 6,000 years. According to the Bible, he's only 6,000 years to come into play. You got civilization that, that's predated him 78 trillion years. And all he knows is one name is Yahweh. Or the Elohim. And the Elohim, he don't know these people's names. But they're giving us the name of these, these so-called angels. Michael, Uriel, Raphael, Samael, all these L's named after Elohim. These are so-called people teaching man how to uh, use makeup. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just read the book for yourself. What is that? Uh, 105, let's go here. So Enoch is journeying through, through the earth and Sheol. What is Sheol? Sheol is, is so-called the uh, under the earth or whatever you want to call it. Let's see. What does that word Sheol mean? They talk about the abyss or whatever, the under the underworld. Let's see what this word is. Sheol, underplace, a uh, place to which people descend at death. Okay, that's just the damn dirt. You go in the damn, your body goes in the damn dirt. Underworld, place to which people descend to at death. When you die, your body goes in the goddamn dirt, in the ground. Okay? That's what that is. It goes, it goes into the damn dirt, dirt. Right? Now, let's do this. Um, let's do this. So we know that black folks came up with, with time. Okay? Alright, so now just just think about this, people. Think. Um the, the, the sky is heaven. The earth is the ground. And the sun is in the sky. The sun is in heaven. Right? And the sun is hot. Right? And they say that hell is hot. So, people say they die, they're going to go to heaven. Right? But, it's hot in heaven. Because the sun is in heaven. It's in the sky, and it's hot. It'll burn you, it'll burn you up. So, you think it's cool in heaven? It's air conditioning in heaven, in the sky? Look, I mean, do the, 
do the goddamn research. They're telling you clear as day what heaven is. Just the damn sky. to it, Shemayim, break the world apart, heaven means sky, look up in the, look up, the sky, okay, now if you want to, in order for you to travel, and to the, and if you want to, in order for you to travel further up into the sky, into the heaven, to the, into the sky, you need to, you need to build, you have to build a, uh, a craft, that's able to ascend that high in the sky. And what's and what's up there? Okay? What's up there? So heaven is the sky. Says Shemayim. What is Mayim? Water. Now there was a guy who built a balloon. Uh what is this guy name? So I can find him. Uh High altitude. They did a commercial in two. Uh, what's that guy name? P Picard. August Picard. His name is August Picard. Okay. So, images of a high altitude balloon, August Picard, right? He built this balloon, right? And it says, uh, let's see here. He built a balloon to go high into the sky. August Picard was a physicist and an inventor and explorer known for his record breaking balloon flights in, uh, to the stratosphere. Okay. Uh, he was quoted in Popular Science magazine saying the Earth seemed a flat disk with upturned edge. Uh, okay, so he said his, his balloon reached the altitude of uh, uh, 51,775 feet. Not that far above the altitude of a commercial flight. Okay. So he reached uh his balloon was, uh, he went up into the sky, right? This is what, this is what he says. Okay. Alright. His name is August Picard. Okay. Now, so, I hope this was, was enough more information to add to the piece of the puzzle. Okay. Uh, draw your own conclusions. Comment down below in the comment box. Let me know your thoughts. Okay. All right. You heard. You heard Anthony Browder. He wrote a book called Now Valley Civilizations. I have that book at home. All right. And he says that black people came up with time. We came up with time. So how the hell do people actually know that today, today, that today, depending on what side of the world you own, that today is Sunday? How do how do you actually know that that next year is going to be 2020? How do you know? We quick to celebrate all these goddamn holidays. I don't celebrate none of that shit. I don't celebrate. My, I don't even celebrate my damn birthday. It's just another damn day. What's going to be different? So when Christmas pop up, what's going to be different from Christmas Day versus versus the next day? Still got to pay those goddamn bills. You know what I'm saying? 
what a, uh, uh, what company want to hear about no goddamn Christmas? They want their bill paid. But they don't cut your goddamn water off. Light man won't hear about no goddamn Christmas. He don't give a they don't give a shit. You niggas can go out and buy all that dumb shit, and then the next day be broke and trying to figure out how you gonna pay your goddamn bills. Damn shame. So, in your Bible, this dude right here, he's an albino. He will be considered your Noah in the Bible. And it says Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Those are names that just been made up, whatever, right? These are allegories describing, describing historical events. Okay? Black albinos. And their African parents. What is an African? African is just a made up word. With blacks and blue eyes. Okay? For many thousands of years, the black race was the only people to inhabit the whole earth. Okay? like 20,000 years ago and further shows that they were the first Americans and not Mongolians. The Negroes were always here. They were Aborigines of the continent of the Americas. So that's why I'm still skeptical, skeptical about that slave trade bullshit. I think that slave trade is a bunch of bullshit. You don't hear about no goddamn slave trade until you see it on, on roots. This man is saying that we were already here. We were already here. Okay? Quote, the blood of the prehistoric black race is found on every continent and island today. So you're not just confined to so-called Africa. You're not just confined to so-called we're on every continent. Every continent. You go to any continent, you're going to find some black people. You're going to find black people there. Okay? Now, before the earth was made, before the earth, what we are walking on, standing, standing upon, before that was made, before the sky and the heaven that we see, the skies that we look up and see, before that shit was made, what was it? Before there was any color, what was it? Total darkness. And out of that total darkness came a man. And before the man was created, it was a woman. Because of the total darkness, the womb, the black, that black shit, that's her womb. And out of that womb came the black man. So what came out of the sky? So-called space. Ain't no space. What came out of the sky was a black man. Black people. And they came down to earth. And did all this shit. Now my next question. My next question is, where they get all the metals and shit at to build all these goddamn boats? Where all the metals and stuff come from? Because if it's if it's just so-called trees and shit, whatever, right? Where the fuck the metals come from to build these big ass pipes? You know what I'm saying? Where all that stuff come from? They just they just throw shit at us. In our faces, we don't question a goddamn thing. But I do. 
With that being said, click subscribe. See you on the next one. Peace.